Get ready, today we are taking our scraping abilities to the next level. Hi, I'm Alex, the architect for Backfrap, and this is Talking to the Architect. And today we are going to answer Bruno's question. I loved your scraper video, can we do it with images? Hi Bruno, thank you so much for the question, and yes, you can. Turns out our SDK and frameworks are very, very flexible, so you can do practically anything you want with it. And today I'll show you how to scrape images from practically any website. So here I have this application I just created. It's an empty application. I named it Image Downloader. So this is pretty much what you're going to see when you create a new application. And also I found this uh, NPM module. You have to go to npmjs.com and I searched for Node Basics for Image. This gets a URL and converts its content to a based 64 encoded uh, string that we're going to use to save our image to our database. And this is the image that we're going to scrape today. It's a puppy from a website. So back here to my dashboard, I'm going to go to cloud code. And first thing I have to do is to install this NPM module into my uh, app. So I'm going to create a new file, name it package.json. The name must be package.json. And in here, we are going to create a JSON object, name it dependencies. And this will have a property and a value. The property will be the name of the module and you have to correctly spell it. So I like to come here and copy it. And the value is the version number you want to use. If you want to use the latest one, all you have to do is put a asterisk in there and hit deploy. So now we are good to go. I'll have to go to my main.js file and in here I have to choose if I'm going to create a job and I can uh, schedule the run for that job or call it manually or if I'm going to create a cloud function and then I have to manually call it every time I want. So today I'll be creating a job and the first thing I have to do is to instantiate that npm module. We do that by typing const base 64 equals require and then the uh, package name. Once again, it must be correctly spelled. So I like to paste it. And then we can start creating our job. So parse.cloud.job, give, uh, give it a good job name. So get image. And this will make a synchronous calls. So we have to create it a synchronous uh, function. So async, this will get a request and we're going to arrow function that request to my code. So the first thing I have to do is to instantiate the URL that I'm going to use. So const URL equals, this will be a string, and I'm going to get the puppies image URL, turns out to be a quite a big string. So let's paste it in there. Then we can pass on some options. If you need to pass on headers for the website to uh, accept your request, this is the place to do it. I'm going to create a example header that is going to change uh, the content as a string, but you can use practically any header that you need. So const options equals, this will be a JSON uh, object, then string true, oops. Now that I have everything that I need, I have to create that image that will retrieve the content for me as a base64 encoded string. So const image equals, I'll wait because this is going to be a asynchronous call, base64 dot encode, and encode. We're going to pass the first uh, parameter as the URL and the second one as the options. With that out of the way, now I will have my image if it is successfully re was retrieved by my code. So I'm going to save it as a file. So const file equals new parse dot file. Oops, must be a uppercase file. And in here, I'm going to pass the name of the file. So puppy .jpeg. And then I'm going to pass uh, the second parameter as a base64 string. So base64 and my image. Now I have to save that file in order to retrieve it as an object. So uh, let 
saved file equals await because this is also an asynchronous call file dot save now i have my file saved and i must uh, append it to a database record so we're going to create a new class and inside that class we're going to put a record that references this file so const photo equals new parse dot object in the class name. The class name is uh, the class that is going to show on the database browser. So I'm going to call this photo. And with that, I have to create uh, uh, the properties for this photo object. So I'm going to create one named uh, name. So photo.set name, which will be a string, and I'm going to pass it puppy as the value. And then photo.set and I'm going to call it picture and pass on my saved file uh, content. So saved file. Now I have to save this record as well. So this is also an asynchronous call. So await photo.save. And as this is a cloud job, I must always return something. So I'm just return true. Click deploy. This takes a couple of seconds as we are deploying the modules and code through all the application servers. And once that is done, you can go to jobs. And here is my get image job. If I run this, I can check the status here on job status. And back on the database browser, here is my photo object. Let's open it. Here I have my picture as a file, having my puppy J JPEG, and I misspelled that, and my uh, name as puppy. So if I click this, it will save it as a JPEG, but it's having some issues because I use a J JGP inst instead of JPEG. So let's go back and correct that. So main.js JPEG deploy. That's it, back to jobs, run it again, go to the database, and now I have my puppy JPEG correctly spelled, so if I click this, it will open uh, my puppy image inside uh, from my application instead of the website. Of course, I used just one image today, but you can create an array of images and loop through download, downloading everything and creating records in your database. So if you found this content useful, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this link with a friend and they can learn something too. If you already subscribed, thank you for that. And if you have any questions or suggestions like Bruno did, please leave it on the comment section down below. We always answer all the questions. And don't miss out. Tomorrow we will have our free webinar where we are going to discuss real-time applications. I'm sure we can uh, learn a lot together. This is totally free and there is a link for, you know, for the invitation on the description of this video. So I hope this was helpful to you and hope to see you back. See you soon. Bye-bye.